Okay, so let's start at the very beginning with the Linux boot process. Now BIOS stands for Basic Input Output System. It's a special type of firmware used in the booting process and it's the first piece of software that's executed when a computer is turned on. The BIOS is actually operating system independent. Its primary purpose is to test the underlying hardware components and to load a bootloader or an operating system. There are two primary bootloaders for Linux. The first one is LILO, which stands for Linux Loader, L-I-L-O. The next one is GRUB, which stands for Grand Unified Bootloader. GRUB has really replaced LILO at this point, but you may run into some older Linux systems that still use LILO, so I just wanted to point that out. The primary purpose of the bootloader is to actually start the operating system. It typically does this by using an init RD, which stands for initial RAM disk. The init RD is a temporary file system that's loaded into memory when the system boots. This file system can contain helpers that perform hardware detection and load the necessary modules to get the actual file system mounted. Once the init RD mounts the actual root file system, its job is done and the operating system continues loading from the real root file system. The Linux kernel, the initial RAM disk, and some other files that are needed to boot the operating system are stored in forward slash boot. The Linux kernel is typically named VM Linux or VM Linux. If the kernel is compressed, it's named in the VM Linux format. Now that ends with a Z. When a system boots up, there can be a lot of messages that just fly by the screen. These messages are generated by the Linux kernel. There are two ways to see these messages. The first way is to use the dmessage command, which dumps the contents of the kernel ring buffer to the screen. By the way, that command is spelled D-M-E-S-G. Now, since the messages are stored in memory in a ring buffer, when new messages get added to the buffer, old messages get dropped off. The good news is that the kernel messages are typically stored on disk in the var log D message file. So if something scrolls off the end of the buffer, you can still find it in that log file. If you enjoyed this video, then I know you're going to love my Linux administration bootcamp course available at linuxtrainingacademy.com. This course is designed so that you don't have to have any previous Linux experience. If you do, that's great, but it's not required because I'm going to take you from the very beginning and guide you step by step all along the way. By the end of the course, you'll not only be a competent Linux user, you'll also have enough skills to start working as a Linux system administrator. By the way, this course also comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, which means you have everything to gain and nothing to lose by trying it out. So if you want to learn Linux system administration and supercharge your career, enroll today. I hope to see you in class.